and I will be saving that. We'll be uploading it to um, the teacher training YouTube channel later on this week. So if you want to go back and watch again what we did today, you forgot what we did, you can go back and watch that again at any time. Um, what you're going to find with me today, I have two colleagues on board with me today, Barb Miraglia, who works with me in professional development, and my wife, Paula Richman, who is a teacher at Barrington Middle School. Uh, they're going to be monitoring the chat feature. So the first thing I want you all to locate, if you are on your computer, the easiest way to locate this is down the bottom of your window, you'll see a link that says chat. When you click on that, it will open a chat window, typically on the right-hand side for you, and that allows you to chat in and monitor uh, what's going on in the chat. Since I have muted all your mics, I'm not gonna open them up until the very end because obviously that would just overload us. But uh, Barb and Paula will be monitoring the chat. So as you guys have questions, they'll be answering them in that chat. And if there's some that are key, they'll let me know and I will go ahead and answer those questions openly for everybody. What I'm going to try and do is take you through a series of ways to use Zoom to first get into Zoom and set up calls like we did today, and then how to best use it with students and even your colleagues. I will try and do all that in about 35 to 40 minutes, and then we will come back and answer any questions you guys have afterwards. I see a lot of chats going on over there, yep. and obviously I can't monitor that and do what I have to do, so thank you, Paula and Barb, for being there and monitoring that chat session for us. Yes, good morning, everybody. It's good to see so many familiar faces and I hope everybody is staying safe. Good morning. And Paula's in the other room, so we don't microphone each other out. All right, <clears throat> so first of all, what I wanna say is that Zoom has done a great thing for us as Hillsborough County employees. They have gone ahead and lifted the 40 minute time limit you normally would have on a Zoom chat. Uh, so normally if you sign up for a free account, which I've been using Zoom for the better part of three or four years now for my online classes, you have a 40 minute time limit. At that point it kicks you out or you can pay for the pro version. Um, luckily for me, I work part time at Florida Southern College and they've given me the free version I'm using with you guys today. Uh, so I've got some more folks to admit here real quick. Sorry about that. Um, the 40 minute time is lifted through the end of July. And so that means you can have a, a conference with up to 100 people in it for as long as you need it to go on for. Uh, hopefully with your students, there's some other courses we're offering later in the week that uh, Barb can talk about later that kind of give you some best practices um, to not uh, you know, go beyond 30 minutes with your kids. You're gonna lose them and they have other classes, other subjects to deal with as well. If you're elementary, it's other subjects. If you're middle high school, it's other teachers they have to work with as well. Um, second thing I want you to realize is the district has set up Clever already. How many of you are familiar with Clever? Just kind of raise a hand up like this because I can see all of you. Okay. Uh, in Clever, if you haven't found it yet, when you log into Clever, and I'll show you that in just a moment, um, there is a link that takes you directly into Zoom. And so that's a neat piece. And once you have already set up um, a, an account with Zoom, it actually logs you in. So I'm going to show you guys my first screen real quick. And that is this one here of our Clever account. So I'm gonna log in using my same district username and password I use for Office 365 or anything else that we happen to use. And when I sign in, I have to log in as a teacher because I have a couple logins, guys. You'll see I favorited Zoom, so it's up here at the top of my screen as well. Many of you have been looking for lessons and stuff like that. They're also found here on your Clever homepage and the district uh, division of teaching and learning continues to update those. Down at the bottom though, if you haven't found Zoom yet, you have a more app section and Zoom is down here. And if you're not familiar with favoriting apps, all you gotta do is hover over it and click on a little heart and that will favorite it for you and make it up here at the top where it's easier to find. When I click on that, if you already have an account, like I said, it will automatically log you into that account as it's gonna do right here. And you can see here is my personal account with the school district. Uh, this is different from the one I'm using with you guys right now because, again, I have a pro account already. But notice here at the top of the screen, they've said they've lifted that 40-minute time limit. Um, even though you still have a free basic account, you're up to 100 people in a meeting, uh, you can do more than 40 minutes if you needed to. Uh, for example, if you were um, teaching in, in middle or high school, had multiple classes, you might set up a chat for an hour and a half and only go on and make kids stay for 30 minutes, but those questions could stay after. Um, they can come back in if they have questions later on while they're working on an assignment. Over here on the left-hand side is the most important tab you're gonna find. It is the meetings tab. 
And when I click on that, and let me just admit a few more people, guys. Give me a second. They still come in. All right. When you click on that, you'll notice I have a scheduled meeting for Thursday, March 26th. Now, there are multiple ways to start a meeting in Zoom. Uh, one of them is on the main page. I'll show you in a moment in the Zoom app. Um, but I find this method to be much easier. And there's two reasons behind it. Number one, uh, you get that nice invitation we were able to send you out today with dates and when you guys were supposed to come in. Uh, number two, there are certain features and settings you can lock in ahead of time. So I'm going to show you guys this because I'm going to schedule a new meeting, a new fake meeting. So we'll call this my fake meeting because we need a little humor right now, don't we? And notice you can send the, the time, the date, whenever you want to do it. So I'm going to set mine up for Friday. I'm going to set it up for 11 a.m. And even though there's a duration piece here, know that even though I set this only for two hours, it doesn't mean it cuts me off at two hours. It's just set up for two hours as a, a planning piece for folks if you did a calendar invite, okay? It's not a recurring meeting, so we don't worry about that one. Um, I let the system generate my main meeting ID automatically instead of me having to think those things up, and I am requiring a password. Now, I'm doing that because um, I don't want the link to go out to 20 different people who aren't supposed to be on the chat. And now instead of 95 of you, I've got um, 120 of you. So that's to kind of limit who comes in. The next section though, ladies and gentlemen, right here that I'm circling around with my mouse is the most important section, especially when working with your students. So for you guys, I enabled your video and my video because I want you to see me and see what I'm doing. And I want to see you guys as well. There are um, multiple schools of thought on whether or not we should show student videos. What I'm being told best practice is to not have student videos on. And you can set this by default right here. So by clicking off, it means that your students will not be able to have a video on. If you still want their video on, that's entirely up to you, something you might want to discuss with your principal. I know principals are working on having Zoom meetings with you guys throughout this week. But if you do record your session like I'm doing right now, you definitely want student videos off. We don't want to broadcast them. We don't want to put them out on EDSB. Because one of the neat things for this, ladies and gentlemen, is let's say, for example, and I got a whole bunch more trying to come in. So give me one second, guys. All right, they're all in now, too. Um, if you record this and put it on Edsby with someone's video, a student's video, that could be something as far as FERPA, we could violate uh, any kind of number of uh, regulations with the, net, with the federal government. So we don't want to put student videos out there. You definitely want that off, you're going to record. But like my session I'm recording today, you guys can record something you do with your students and then go back and actually put it um, online for them to watch later. Okay. Next section is about audio. I leave it open for both. I've had folks telephone in before uh, just so they can hear the instruction. They may not be able to see anything, but they could telephone in if they needed to. Let's say they were in a remote location, their power went out, whatever number of things might happen. At the last thing is meeting options. Notice I did not enable joining before the host today. I did not let you guys come in here before me. I did mute you all upon entry and I did enable a waiting room, which I've got somebody in now and I'm gonna let them in. So enabling that waiting room meant you guys had a place to stay before you came in. That allowed me to get on with my co-trainers, Barb and Paula and say, okay, here's what I'm gonna do, here's how I'm gonna do it, this is what I'm gonna set up, vice versa. Those kind of things they will do with them before you guys came in. I also took a couple of screenshots of screens I'm gonna show you so you can see what my interface looks like because when I go to share my screen with you guys, you only see the window I'm showing. If I show you the entire screen, you won't see the Zoom windows. You'll see everything else on my desktop. And so that's not a very effective way to show people how to work on something. Um, two more features down here, just authenticated users only. I don't worry about that one. And then I set up all my meetings to record automatically. And that way, uh, it sets up to record once I go on board. I don't have to think about it or remember to do it. Now, as far as recording goes, I'll show you where that comes in the end and what it looks like at the end. But this thing does it automatically, that when I stop recording or I stop the meeting, it saves it on my computer. It saves it on my computer. And for you, it's going to be in the same location for everybody. It's going to be in a folder called Documents. And in there, you'll find a new folder labeled Zoom. And I'll show you that one a little bit later on. So let me save my meeting. And notice it's going to give me this nice window here with a calendar invite so I can add it to my calendar if I want to add it to my calendar. It gives me the meeting ID. It gives me the required password. It gives me the link. 
and then I can copy my invitation, which is all I did for you guys. I copy the invitation, I paste it in the PDS, and I send it to you. If I were doing this with students, I would copy the invitation, I would paste it into Edsby, and send it out to my students as a message, okay? So that is this window. You can also, by the way, come back and edit meetings later. You can start meetings from this window, but I happen to like the app better. So the last thing I want to show you guys, I'm gonna click back on meetings so you can now see I have two meetings going on here. And I can start them, I can delete them, whatever I wanna do, I can access always on this same dashboard. Up here at the top, you haven't done it yet, in resources is a place to download the Zoom client. Now if you're working on a computer, I highly recommend downloading the Zoom client because it makes this process a whole lot easier. It gives you more features and more things you can do with the window. If you're working on an iPad, Android tablet, iPhone, Android phone, you can use the client as well. In fact, you probably want to. Uh, but as far as running meetings, I have done it all three ways, ladies and gentlemen. I have done them from my computer. I've done them from my iPad. I've done it from my phone. Participating on an iPad, participating on a phone is fine. But if you're going to be running the meeting, I want you to realize that even though I can click out of this window anytime and do other things in the background, and you can still see my face and I'm moving. I've done many meetings on my iPad when I was overseas one summer teaching a class online. And the second I clicked off that window, it froze my face like this. And you don't want that to be stuck with your students and you've got this weird looking face going on and you're kind of like stuck there. So I, I definitely want you to think about that and the times I had to do it once I realized it was doing that, I made sure I was going like this before I moved off that window. And so it got me in smiling instead of something else. Okay, so that's starting a meeting, getting a meeting going. I'm gonna stop sharing that. We're gonna come back to our main window where I can see all of you guys again. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I wanna show you is a couple of snippets of various screens you will see. So the first one is gonna be what you're gonna see uh, when you open up the, um, the main session. Give me just one second, guys. I'm gonna get it up and going. So when you open the app, and Scott Richmond has way too many windows open. Here we go. This is a preview of the invitation. So when you log into the actual app uh, for Zoom, you will see this window. And notice you've got the new meeting piece, you've got the join piece, you can schedule, you can talk about sharing your screen, but this is that invitation I was talking about for you guys. Um, I was able to start the meeting here. Now there's only a screenshot, so I can't actively do anything on it. But this little three dot icon, you can see this here. When I click on that, I can actually copy the invitation as well from here. So another place I can see the same invitation. And as long as you're logged in to both accounts in the same way, you'll be able to go ahead and access this uh, from this window. I like this version best when I want to join a chat. I click on join, I type in the ID, I type in the password, I'm ready to go. Now, if you're the one conducting the chat, all you do is click on start. It opens your chat up and then you can welcome people in. So, guess my next piece of information, when we get stuck into a window where you guys were all in the waiting room. So let me show you what the waiting room looks like. And this is the waiting room I see. So at this point, uh, Jody and Rosemary and whoever E-Step is, you guys were sitting in the waiting room and you see Barb and I were in the meeting and there are actually 34 people. There were 32 waiting. There's a button here on the waiting room where you can hit admit all. And that's how uh, all of you kind of popped in all at one time. I hit admit all. And so doing that lets you guys in. But a more important feature that I want you guys to see is the mute all button. So let me share this one with you. Notice on this screen, I've done the more piece. So this is the same window we had before, but I've clicked on the more and notice mute participants on entry. So I have that check. So it muted you guys automatically. Uh, 95 people coming to chat at one time just does not work. And then allow participants to mute themselves. I uncheck that. That way you guys have no control. However, uh, what I can do right now is um, I'm gonna unmute one of you and you'll see when it happens. Um, whoever you are wearing a white sweater, um, say hello. Hi. 
Okay, so there, I just unmuted you for a second and now you've got it. I'm gonna mute you back. Uh, Dana is your name, now I can see it, it came up. Uh, and Dana cannot unmute herself again, so she's kind of trapped in there. Um, there's other pieces in here. Here's my put participants in waiting room on entry. I could always uncheck that at some point if we started the chat and I wanted to let people come in, that could be done as well. So a lot of features on here, also the mute and unmute. Now I'm gonna show you guys where that is found. So give me just one second. This is what the chat session looks like on my end. And of course, at this point, only Barb and I were on there and you can see I've got myself making a lovely face. I have no idea what I'm doing there. You can laugh at me all you want, by the way. Be, be, feel free to do that. I taught middle school for a decade. I understand that. So Barb had her camera off. This is what you will see when you set up your window. Now I am in the gallery view. Notice up over here, it says speaker view. If I click on that, it switches that only the active window is there. And then every time someone else talks, it keeps switching screens. And if you like that kind of thing, go for it. I like the gallery view a whole lot better. Um, and I'll take a screenshot in a moment when you guys are all back up again in my gallery view and show you what that looks like. Down here at the bottom, these two controls over here, the mute and the stop video, those are only for you in your window. It's only for you and what you happen to do. However, the stop video, I'm sorry, the video one has a neat feature called virtual backgrounds. I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, invite is if I wanted to invite other folks to my meeting that didn't get my invitation ahead of time. I can send out a link to them. But again, we're inviting them via the original invite from Zoom, setting up the meeting ahead of time. Here's managed participants where I went ahead and set up that managed piece and I opened those windows showing you you guys in the wait room. It's also where I can mute you all, I can allow you all to talk, I can turn all your videos off at one time. It's all in that same window. The share screen button is where I go and share items with you. Um, if you are working on a computer, this is very important, you probably wanna write this down. If you're working on a computer, any window you wanna share, you wanna have open ahead of time in the background. So for example, these screenshots that I'm sending you guys to look at, I have them open already running in the background. And that way when I click on that window, it allows me to pick the one I wanna share with you. If you were using a PowerPoint, and a lot of folks may wanna do this, and uh, Barb, you're doing a training on tomorrow, right? Barb? Oh, Barb stepped away. I think it's tomorrow. Barb has a training tomorrow on uh, tips and tricks for uh, online learning they're gonna share a PowerPoint with you. If you wanna share the PowerPoint, you need to have it running in the background ahead of time. Otherwise, you won't be able to select it. So that's the share screen piece. Chat feature just toggles the chat window, and that allows you to open it up so folks can type in. I know you guys are typing right away because my chat window is going nuts in the background, and thank you, Paul and Barb, uh, for monitoring that for me. Record is where I go and record it. Breakout rooms is a new feature we just got recently, and I'm gonna show you guys how that one works in a little bit. I'm gonna put you guys in the chat rooms. I'm gonna come join you in your chat rooms and then put you back into a main room. If you get really good at this piece, you'll be able to, and your kids are good enough at it, you'll be able to put them in a chat room to have a discussion, go and sit with them like you would if you walked around your classroom, and then come back. Now, I'm showing you kind of every feature I can, ladies and gentlemen, because I want you to be aware, but you're probably gonna start out with baby steps. You're probably gonna start out with barely doing anything on this program because you gotta get comfortable using it. And what I encourage you to do more than anything is, you have this feature now, talk with your colleagues, set up a fake meeting, go in and have a conversation, uh, go in and do this and play around. And I'm working on it with my ACP. I run the alternative certification program is one of my other jobs. Some of you may have come through there, hello if you didn't. Um, I'm working with my trainers. We did two chats this week. And when we got done with our chats this past week during spring break, they went on and did their own chats to practice using these features so they can use them in the classes we have starting as early as tonight. So I'm gonna stop sharing that window and bring you guys back. I wanna show you real quick my lovely gallery view of you guys. So give me just one second. And uh, some of you will be on this window and some of you will not. So give me just one second, here we go. And there you guys are. 
So as you can see in this window, what I have open is I've got a bunch of you here and caught some of you in some, some of those faces like myself, my mouth is half open. You can see I'm sharing over here my window for managing participants. Apparently I have some folks trying to get admitted right now. I need to go catch them real quick. And then down here you can see all this stuff going on where Paula and uh, Barb are meshing you guys and thank you guys for doing that. Let me stop that for a minute. Let me go admit my other folks who are waiting. And Scott, if you could turn uh, Barb's mic back on, please. Oh, did I mute Barb? I'm sorry. Hey, Barb. Whoa. I, whoops. There Hi, you go, Scott. Barb. Now yes. I got gotcha. you. Yes, that's why I, I was like, I'm here, I'm here. Yes, we will uh, be hosting that uh, several times this week. Yep. <laughs> What's the name of it again, Barb? What's that? What's the name of it again? Uh, tips and tricks, best practices for virtual learning. Okay. Yep. Uh, is that all you were asking? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. Yes, ma'am. Um, I mentioned the virtual background piece. If you really want to play around and have fun, I'm going to show you one in a minute. I see Paul has got one there for us too. Um, I'm going to show you this window. Uh, this is when you click on the video window, you have an option to do choose virtual background. Uh, and so you can do that and change your background. I see Paula's at the beach. Uh, I'm going to show you guys one of my favorites here real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. I need to be at Disney World, of course. That's where I should be right now. Oh, and Rosemary is in space. So um, just be careful on some of these when your arm goes up in it because it is using green screen technology to do on TV. Sometimes your hand disappears and your fingers look really weird. Um, so be careful with that piece if you're not sitting behind the background. Um, so that's that piece. That's the, the main window piece. The other neat sharing feature, ladies and gentlemen, is a virtual whiteboard. And depending upon the size of your class, um, you can share a virtual whiteboard. And I'm going to show you that now. The nice thing about my whiteboard is I can type in in text. <clears throat> I can also write on my whiteboard. And some of you are going to figure out real quick. Um, but the answer should be 12. Figure out real quick, you have an annotate button that you can use to actually go in and um, write on the screen as well. I've enabled it for you. There are various features where you can tell the students they can't have access to it, they can't have access to it. Um, you can go back and forth on this piece, uh, but it really is neat. I've done this uh, with uh, some students before, or we worked on math problems, or we worked on a reading sample, and we, we highlighted text, whatever it may be. Up, oh, some of you figured it out, there you go. Um, but it's it's one of those things where the more you play with technology, the better off you're going to be. And I, I don't know what your level of technology is, ladies and gentlemen. You guys could be a, a 1 on a scale of 1 to 10. You could be a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. Um, but what I want you to realize is that playing with this, and we did this last night, Barb, in our, in our group chat with our entire team, uh, playing with this allows you the chance to figure out all the things you can do and how you can use it best to meet your needs as an educator. Um, what I want you guys to realize is that what we're doing here today is just experiencing everything that you can see in this program and what it allows you to do. Uh, some of you figure out the sticker feature. Um, there's also an eraser up there. And then of course I have master control so I can clear all your drawings at one time and then they're gone. Um, that's the neat feature. By the way, while we're talking about this, by default, when you load up your uh, particular piece, it allows you to have sharing control. So you can allow your students to share if they wanna share a document they're working on, but nobody can share while you are sharing at the same time. You guys have master control over those things. And that's located again down at the bottom of the window as we talked about earlier. Um, let's see, so we've talked about Starting meetings, we've talked about uh, signing in, we've talked about the chat feature, um, raising your virtual hand. So down at the bottom of your window, you should have a participants button. If you click on that participants button, you'll have a window appear on the right hand side and you will be able to then raise your virtual hand. Now I can't show you that one because I see a different one than you, but I see that uh, Heather and Ellis and Sharon and a bunch of you, Shelly, you guys have all figured that one out. Um, I can then, and I'm going to show you guys a screenshot here, what it looks like for me. So this is um, one of our participants here. Go ahead, Paul. All right. So we are being asked, and uh, Barb has asked as well, for you to go over the whiteboard again. Sure. You got it. I'll go back to it in a minute. No problem. Oh, and you're, you muted her again. I muted Barb again. Sorry, Barb. 
I didn't do it on purpose, I swear. <laughs> Scott, I'm starting to think that, that you would like this feature in the office as well. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys don't know Barb, Barb is, um, Barb is, is loud. That's the best way to put it. Barb is loud. Barb, you could hear from down the hallway at ISC. So notice I've got this got piece it. here where I can lower her hand by clicking on it. Uh, when your hand goes up, I see a virtual hand going up on the screen, and I can lower that hand, and then I can unmute your microphone and let you speak. Again, with um, 95 people on this chat today, I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh, but with uh, if I only had 20 students on, I could do the virtual hand piece and allow you guys to do that. All right. Any questions on the virtual hand before I move on? And I'll go back. What's the uh oh? oh can't, can't see, see mine. mine. Liliana, can't see mine. Can't see your hand. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So when you click on participants, and Paul, if you do that for me and take a yep. screenshot of what it looks like for you, and then I'll let you share it. Just want to make sure everybody's got it. Oh, the uh oh is about the comment of poor Barb. It shows a blue hand on the right is correct. Yes, that's correct. You'll see a blue hand. I'm going to come back to the whiteboard again. Give me just a minute. I want to make sure everybody's good on this one. Um, I, you know, I don't do this as a participant very often, Kathy, so I couldn't tell you um, offhand if, if you guys can see your own hand raised up, but I know in that participant's window, you can see you've raised it. Okay, yeah, so Dr. Garcia says, yes, you can see it. Yes, um, and I know when I've been on the participant side, yes, you can see you can see when you've raised your hand and you can also lower your hand as well. But you've got to actually hover over your actual window sometimes to see it. So like you'd have to hover over yourself, your picture of yourself to be able to see it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the whiteboard. Um, Liliana, it depends on, on your computer. You may or may not be able to do it. Uh, you have to have pictures loaded in there. Um, it takes some time to play around with. Uh, I know on my, my laptop, it's not fast enough to handle it. Um, uh, Stacy, to answer your question, those are all pictures my wife and I have taken um, on our travels. There are, there are a couple of preloaded ones in some versions of Zoom, but um, if you take just something, a picture that you have taken that doesn't have like people in it, um, you can uh, just add it to it allows you to add it. Um, when you click on the virtual, choose a virtual background, it will, there's a little plus sign. Let me. I can take a screenshot of it. Give me a second. And when you, when you click the plus sign, you can then add any picture that you, that you have. So you could even get general ones from the internet. So this is what it looks like in that window Paul is describing. And here's that little plus symbol and you can see these are some preloaded pictures and then these are some pictures I've added myself. Um, but the plus symbol is how I added those pictures in. And you definitely wanna have a landscape picture. You don't wanna have a portrait picture or it turns it on its side. So. Um, so yeah, if you have two people in the same room on the same Zoom chat, it can be an issue. Um, yes, Stacy, you'll have that, that piece. Uh, that's why Paul and I are separated by a door, um, because otherwise we've been in the same room before and it just echoes back and forth. Um, answer your question, Stacy, the host, you'll be able to have those settings. Yes, you can change that background for yourself. You can change it right now too, in fact, if you want to. Some of you figured it out already. Um, as far as Farah, you said settings. There are various settings you might want to change. Uh, we can talk about specifics if you want, but I know folks wanted me to go back to the whiteboard. So I'm going to pull that back up for you guys. Okay, so I can't see the chat right now. I'll open it up so I can see it. Um, give me a second, guys.
All right, what were the questions? All right, so the way he got there was he went to share, and when he shared, I gave him choices of what things to share, and he chose to share the whiteboard. Correct. What other questions do you guys have? Keep typing a minute you have for this section here on the whiteboard. Oh, share is down the bottom. Share is down the bottom and the bottom of your window when you have that main window open. I, ha I can't go back there right now. You have a share feature. You somewhere have a floating window that has information about sharing as well. Um, you cannot add. share while you're sharing. That's correct. Um, you can't do it while I am doing it. Correct. They can't share while I'm sharing. So give me a moment and I'll get out of my share. They want to know how you write on it. And that's an annotate and I can't find mine right now. Oh, view options. Here we yes. go. Annotate. View options and annotate at the top. And then you'll have a, an, a toolbar that allows you to um, draw, do pictures, have a mouse, text. Are you able to upload a PDF was the question. Um, and yes, you can use a PDF. You wouldn't upload it, you would share it. You have it open on your screen and share it. Um, does the whiteboard need to be open in advanced like PowerPoint? No, it's part of Zoom itself. So Zoom um, has this built in as a feature. So when you go to share, if you have no other windows open, you will see just the whiteboard and your desktop as able to share. Um, I'm just kind of reading through the questions as they come up here. Looks like a lot of you figured out the whiteboard. And again, you can see it could get kind of hectic with 90 some odd people on a chat at the same time. How do you write? Amber, you should somewhere have an annotate button and it may be in your, um... yes, you can. Heidi, you can um, set that that way. Sorry, I'm trying to answer all the questions. Are there programs to add like calendar math? I haven't tried that one yet, Stacy, but I'd be willing to find out. Click on view option, I'll have the annotate option. Um, Lisa, I'll have to look into that one. Uh, yeah, some of you, you may have white as your color and you may have to change the color. Yep, yeah, correct. Yeah, so Kathy, great point. If you hover your mouse at the top of the screen, a drop down menu will come up with all your options. Then you may have a more piece there, and you should have annotate somewhere in there as far as view options. Yes. I'll leave this up for another minute while you guys are playing. Someone is Zod. That's very funny. Yes, got it. Okay. Side-by-side -side mode is where you can actually have uh, in one window the pictures of everybody and the screen you're sharing at the same time. I don't like it. But then again, I'm working on a 27-inch iMac, so I've got plenty of screen real estate. But if you were in a smaller one, oh, Zoom. Oh, I see it now. Yep, very funny. <laughs> um, me and my movie mode. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this share now. And one of you said you wanted to see what it was like to share. So now you're back in this main window and at the bottom you have a share screen button and I have left this open to you so anybody can share right now a document. So if you've got one open you wanna show us, feel free, first one in gets it. Oh, there we go, we got somebody's calendar. Thank you very much. 0322, that must be McLean Middle School. Don't ask me how I know that. Out there. Yeah, I know you taught there. Oh, somebody else has their ideas desktop. Fantastic. Jennings internal. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, you have an option of showing your entire desktop or just a window. So be aware of that piece as well. You'll notice that when I start speaking, the box around me gets highlighted. The program is actually very intuitive in that if you have all of their microphones on, it will highlight whoever is speaking. 
Yep. And so someone else is sharing as well. Okay, Tina asks, how did they share? There is a share button at the bottom. And only one person can share at a time. That's the way I've set it up. It's set up that way by default, Tina. And then those of you had questions, I'm gonna show you guys another screenshot real quick. So I'm gonna interrupt that one share that um, somebody just did, Lori. So here is the bottom of that window that we're talking about. And notice you guys can't share when I'm sharing. So if you're on a computer, you will have a share screen button. You will have a chat button. The chat button will both open and close the chat room so you can see it. The share screen button will both open and close the share screen. Now, somebody also mentioned earlier that when you hover across the top of the screen, you get this window, which I'm going to show you guys now. And what this window does is it brings back those same controls that you're used to seeing. So notice this is the top of my screen, and you can see that I've got my same buttons I'm used to having and I can stop my share, I can do a new share. Here's that annotate button somebody was asking about. Um, there it is up there, I even have it myself uh, so I can annotate documents. All right. The last thing I wanna show you guys, uh, and then we'll stay and answer any questions you all have, is I wanna show you the breakout room and how it works. Um, when you click on breakout room, it does a couple of things for you. It'll let you do it manually, meaning you can assign your students however you want or it'll let you do it as automatic. Now there's currently 95 of you, and I guess I have two people didn't get let in, so there they are. Hi guys, welcome, sorry about that, just noticed you were waiting. Um, I go into breakout rooms, and I'm gonna have it set up, um, let's see, approximately three to four participants per room. So you guys are gonna move now to a breakout room. When you get there, I will pop through some of them. Okay. So there we go. Open all rooms. You guys are moving in. Bye bye. See you in a minute. Give it a second. It's a lot of people. There you go. Bye guys. See you in a minute. Hello, breakout room number two. How are you guys? I'm leaving now. I'm going to another breakout room. Yes, I can. Oh, yay. Are you at your school it's getting amazing set up? when things work out? <laughs> I know. I know. I'm in my classroom right now trying to get stuff I right. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm at. muted. No, I'm not. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. Almost everybody's back. We're going to wait just a moment, everybody to come back in. Yep. 
All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to stop the recording, guys, and uh, that way I have it.